This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Dollis sucks and you know it. Okay, this is a little harsh, I get it, but I do enjoy exaggerating basically everything. So before I get roasted, let me explain myself. For a while, I was getting categorized as a Dollis producer, and I would see comments along the lines of, Dollis forever. And I'm all for people loving the way they do something because as artists and producers, that's in a sense what makes us all unique. But I'm not a Dollis only producer. I probably produce about 80% of uh, my music in a DAW. Whoa, 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 whoa. I produce 80% without the DAW and then 20 in the DAW. And it's for one very specific reason that came up in conversation with a good friend of mine the other day, which is how do you get your track sounding more finished when producing Dollis? Now, this isn't to say that Dollis is bad. It's just to say that it kind of sucks at times. And over the years of trial and error, I came across one specific moment in time where the music I produced left me feeling very proud and it was made completely Dollis. And I've been trying to analyze that moment for what was the magic that was there, right? And I think I found a few things that caused it. So this conversation with my friend basically went like this. I have all these patterns, a cool bass line, some cool synth sounds, now what? And I 100% relate to this problem. And I think a big portion of why my tracks in particular never really feel fully finished when I'm producing them with only hardware is because most hardware has limitations of up to 64 steps in a sequence or four bars. And I know a lot of things, you know, you can tie patterns or they got song mode and all this stuff. But where this becomes an issue for me is in the minutia of adding tiny details while making music. For example, like a, a crash that happens once every 16 bars or a filter synth rise, you know, that happens over a 32 bar uh, breakdown. In essence, it's just automation. So in my world, the world of house music, I try to make things happen on eight bars, like every eight bars. I find that that's kind of the sweet spot for something to always happen or change or introduce a bit of randomness. And without that, I mean, it just sounds like you're playing the same pattern over and over and over again. And that's what you're doing, but you want it to be a little interesting. And I want to quote Paul Simon, but I'm not going to just because I don't remember where or how he said this, but I do remember him saying it. And it's that you need to keep music interesting, saying he changes it up every bar or so, even if it's the same thing. And this is just to grab the listener's attention. Sadly, in today's day and age, this is needed more than ever. We have artists creating music to satisfy algorithms in terms of getting to the chorus faster or getting to the breakdown a little quicker so that listeners stay longer and platforms push their music out to more listeners. It's this instant gratification we all chase, but this isn't what this video is about and that's a topic for an entirely different time. What I wanna focus on is the adding of these little details. It's pretty difficult in the process of making a track to keep up with these things and to get the, um, the grander image of your song as a whole. But it's also these little things that tie your music together. And in a DAW, you can get a big visual representation of where you do or don't have these moments. And yes, that means your song looks good, but it doesn't mean your song sounds good. Okay, so that's one issue I have with Dallas music that you know, I make. But weirdly, this difficulty or a speed bump can also be turned into a pro, which I'll mention later. And another quick one that matters the most, I think, that can solve all of this in one fell swoop is injecting yourself into the music you make with live automation. But before I explain that, let me give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, Squarespace. So I've been using Squarespace uh, for a few years now, actually, and it's what I used to host my current website. Some of my favorite reasons why I use Squarespace are for one, Squarespace's integration with Instagram shopping to tag your products in posts and stories. So when you tag a product, anyone who sees that post will see a view on website button to buy that product directly on your site. And another thing, I have no skills in making websites or coding or anything like that. And luckily Squarespace has a ton of starter templates that are super easy to customize. And it actually makes me feel like I know what I'm doing yet gets the results I want for my web page, especially when trying to make it look a bit more professional. You can add shop pages, widgets for music previews, or just create your own blog section where you can jot down your thoughts. And lastly, 
Another feature I love is the ability to sell digital products like music, synth patches, artwork, whatever. These digital goods are delivered to your customers via customized email links that expire within 24 hours. So you don't have to go and chase down links or anything like that. I find that super helpful. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Ricky Tinez to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, let's get back to it. So with live automation comes spontaneity as well as organic movement to music. And I believe this is true with like, um, if you were to just get like a MIDI controller and map some knobs to your DW, like filter sweeps and stuff like that, where this, um, I don't even know what you want to call it, but where this stuck out to me the most was on my Of You EP that I made entirely on the MPC 4000 and an SP404, link down below in case you're curious. But the way I recorded this was by doing one whole take into the SP404 and then having to record that again with the effects where and when I wanted them. Then again with filter sweeps and again with other effects, like just over and over and over again. It was in this moment of recording over my previous recordings where this controlled randomness would occur because at some point in the song, I would do something on a 15th bar portion, but sometimes I'd end up doing two things on that same 15th bar portion because I'd be adding uh, a filter sweep to a previously recorded reverb. Does that, does that make any sense? This is kind of what inspired the video I did a while back about creatively using effect sends in Ableton Live, just to kind of add life to your music. And I don't know, it's, when it's you doing it and not a perfectly quantized moment in time with a perfect 45 degree straight line of automation, I feel like it just adds so much more to the music. You're using your ears, not your eyes. Your song sounds good versus look good. And I know this is basically the exact opposite of what I said earlier, but there's a time and place for everything. Okay. Lastly is embracing the monotony of programming hardware in song modes. Remember how I said something could be a strength later on? Um, I think that this is what this is. It can be a huge pro or a strength to the dollest producer over the DAW producer, but it heavily kind of hinges on which sequencer you're using. For this example, you know, I brought this massive whale out, the 4K or the MPC 4000, this machine, gives me a pretty robust set of tools when it comes to sequencing options and a usable song mode, but it can be pretty slow to program things in. But that's where the magic can be found. I've noticed that more often than not, when I'm duplicating one pattern to another, it slows me down and lets me think a little bit about how else can I make this unique. To me, the DAW is, is kind of like a car in a city. I can get where I want to go quickly without noticing much. But an MPC is kind of like my skateboard. It takes longer to get there, but I can fully embrace the beauty around me on the journey and really emphasize certain moments of my trip by, you know, stopping and smelling the roses. Cheesy, I know, but I think that that analogy just really nails it for me. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. I hope you got something out of this and, you know, please forgive the long ramble. It was just something that I wanted to say out loud to hopefully solidify my thoughts. And uh, yeah, what do you think? Or where are you at? Are you Dallas? Do you, you know, are you at a certain percentage point? I'm kind of the 80-20 myself. Uh, let me know. And um, yeah, if you want to support the channel, sell some synth merch like these hats. See you later, also later. And whatnot. Sell all that stuff down here, sample packs. But honestly, you kicking it is more than enough. And, um, oh, actually, you know what? New update, 10% of all merch sales actually are going now going to nonprofits helping to fight climate change. So if you're into that, you know where to go. But if you already have a shirt, don't buy one. You don't need it. But if you do end up buying a shirt, I really appreciate it. Anyway, I'm gonna mess around on this thing and kind of show kind of what I mean by making interesting portions and how it kind of slows me down. It's a little difficult sometimes. So you're more than welcome to stay. You know, I always appreciate you here, but if you gotta go and gotta bounce, it's all good. You already know the drill, share the love, share the knowledge, knowledge is power, peace. All right, so let's see where I'm at really quick. This is kind of why this thing gets a little funky. Okay, let's just do something basic. We'll say,
Okay, for the sake of this, I'm gonna just go ahead and make this two bars. So I'm gonna go to window, we'll delete from bar three to four, do it. Okay, cool. So then I, let's say uh, we'll go to Okay, so say I wanted to add a crash at the beginning of this, but only after eight bars. And then at the last one, I wanted the kick to be gone. In a DAW, that is so simple. Drag a crash, select that kick, hit delete. On here, uh-uh, I have to go window. Then I have to say copy. What am I copying? I'm copying from the first bar to the last bar. After bar two, how many copies? Three copies to make eight bars. Does that make sense? I'm making three copies of two. Like I'm starting to do math and I have to like, okay, if I'm doing this, I'm doing that. So now if I do this, we have eight bars. I'm not going to play all eight, but just to prove a point. Okay, cool. So I'll now go to a second track. Eh, okay. When I'm making music on this, I do keep all tracks fully separated, but for this example, I'm not going to do that. Do I not have a crash? Bruh. Okay, let's just say I wanted that, so. So now I need to say sequencer edit, um, timing correction is on, I'll find this pad, which is our drums. Go all the way to the last bar, scoot back a little bit, and then I'll say delete that one kick, delete this one, delete this one, and I'll say overdub, we'll put a kick there, and then a not so hard one here. Awesome, so if I go back a bar, let's go back two bars, this is what it sounds like now. Right. You see how long that took? It's been like a minute and a half, like just trying to do this one simple thing. But it's in that moment where I'm like, hmm, that was cool, but while I'm here, what else can I do? You know, I guess I can add a weird clap here maybe. Yeah, I'll just do that, 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 that. Let's see what that sounds like, right? So I'm like just slowly kind of experimenting. Yo, that's actually kind of tight. So then I can say, cool, I like this sequence. Window, I wanna copy it to two, sure. I'll go here, find a closed hat. Man, this thing is so dusty. It's been a minute since I used this thing. I'm sorry, 4,000. I just have too many NPCs. And we'll do note repeat. Uh, our swing is set way too crazy. We'll do about 55. So then I'll just go in and play eight bars. But because I'm playing eight bars, it's kind of different across the eight bars. There it is, right? So then I can go to track two, and then load some random sample on here. Let's just go to samples. I don't know, from the studio, since, um, expander. What do we got? Yeah, I love this one. So I'm gonna load this to my sample program and I'll just load it here. Um, but yeah, honestly, that's kind of it. I'm just gonna add this part and then I'm gonna roll. Let's do this. So I'll say uh, track two. Man, I love the 4000. I completely. I'm sorry, 4K. I didn't mean to do this to you. So we'll go program, edit, turn the filter on this. Oops, not what I wanted. And we also got the uh, filter envelope to cut off. Yes, yes, yes. Mm, 
Mm -hmm. So full level. Filter's too high. I'll handle that in a second. Yeah. Ah, uh, this is weird. I don't understand this, but you gotta go to monitor and turn it to multi. So we'll go here to edit. Mmm. that note missing. Now I gotta go back and add it. So it's right there. So I can do this a couple ways. I can say just from the beginning. Yeah, I'll just do it from the beginning. It's easiest. That's it. And then we can go back here, track one, program, find our clap, which is, yep. And then I can say mix, I'll go here, effects and A, 20 minus. Come on, baby, come on. And then effects A will be uh, reverb. I like the uh, medium room. Uh, program, come it up to me. Why is that one missing? Oh, did I miss two? Anyway, you get the point. Appreciate you hanging out. This is the 4K. This is why Dallas music sucks. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you later. Let me get this last one on roll. Oh God, oh God. I didn't even turn it on.